Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we spoke we looked at different changes that are happening in the world economy and how countries are now connected more than ever before. Today we're going to be elaborating on those themes as we explore Unit 7, Topic 7, Changes as a Result of the World Economy. As core countries continue to participate in the global economy, we'll continue to see more jobs in the primary sector and the secondary sector be offshored to the semi-periphery countries and also periphery countries. Offshoring is when jobs may manufacturing or production leaves one country in favor for another country. We can see this change in production is impacting the international division of labor and it's part of our new globalized economy. Since it's now cheaper for companies to manufacture products and produce products in the developing world, we've seen a shift of manufacturing industries from the developed world to the developing. This allows companies to make more products at a cheaper rate and increase their profit margins. Countries with more advanced economies are starting to see economic restructuring occur. This is when urban areas shift from manufacturing jobs to more service-based. Countries like the United States are seeing more and more of their economy based around the tertiary sector, and less and less of it based around the primary or secondary, as most of those jobs have been offshored now to favor cheaper production rates in developing countries. Today, we can also see companies outsourcing production of different goods and services to help improve their efficiency and production. Outsourcing is when a company contracts a third-party company, organizing or group of people to complete the work for the company. This has become more prevalent in society as more companies utilize post-fortis methods of production. Post-fortis methods of production are changes to our production facilities. We're now starting to see an increased use of automation and machines and specialized markets that focus on manufacturing smaller units instead of a large assembly line which is controlled by humans. Thanks to post-fortis methods of production, gone are the days of assembly lines being filled with human beings. And here here to stay are the days of assembly lines being filled by machines. These new economic changes have led to a decrease in the amount of jobs being offered in manufacturing in core countries. Core countries that are utilizing manufacturing now is done more by automation. However, we've seen an increase in manufacturing jobs in periphery countries and semi-periphery countries due to their cheap labor and also lack of regulation. These changes in where we're producing our products have also led to an increased urbanization in semi-periphery countries and also periphery countries. Countries. And that's because now there's more jobs in these urban areas. So we're seeing people migrate to urban areas in order for new economic opportunities. And this new urbanization, new jobs and economic opportunities has led to the rise of a new middle class in the developing world. Part of the reason why we've seen a growing middle class is due to the impact of concepts such as the multiplier effect. The multiplier effect looks at the initial change in spending, which creates a ripple effect and impacts the total economy, which leads to more total spending. Now, I can already hear somebody saying, well, what in the world does that mean? Think about it this way. For example, let's say that Apple opens a call center in China or India. That call center then will offer new jobs for people in the area. People will then go to work for Apple at the call center. Apple will then pay them money. So now these employees have more money accessible to them. And maybe they'll go home and save some of it and put it in a bank account, or they'll keep it in a savings account in their house. Or maybe they'll go and spend it. Now, if they go and spend it, that money then will be transferred to someone else in the local economy. They now have more access to wealth as well. All of this is looking at Apple's original investment. Apple spent money to build a call center. That call center then offered more jobs and opportunities, which put more money into the economy. That money then had a ripple effect as it was spent on other products that led to other people in the community gaining economic wealth. They then can save the money or they could spend it themselves. Again, giving more people money, more jobs, and more production. So we can see that Apple's original investment in that call center had a larger economic impact than just that one center. It had a large ripple effect throughout the economy. The money multiplied, hence why it's called the multiplier effect. Now, since we're on the topic of foreign investment, let's talk about how semi-periphery countries and periphery countries seek to motivate foreign investment into their countries. Oftentimes they do this by creating special economic zones, free trade zones, or export processing zones. Special economic zones are areas of a country where the laws for trade and business are different from the rest of the country. The goal is to attract foreign investment from multinational corporations. While countries that implement free trade zones create areas in which goods and resources can be stored, manufactured, or handled without paying extra fees such as 
tariffs. This helped reduces production costs and motivates companies to participate in the local economy. Lastly, export processing zones are areas that promote economic growth by offering incentives to foreign entities, typically focusing on manufacturing. The goal here is to motivate companies to produce goods in an area and then export those goods for sale. Now, it isn't just economic policy that influences companies' production. We can also see companies utilize economies of scale, just-in-time delivery, agglomeration, and growth poles in order to maximize their profits and determine where they should produce their products. Companies that have economies of scale become more efficient and productive as they scale up and grow as a business. When a company gets larger, they're able to produce more products at a lower individual cost. A great example of this could be TV shows like The Mandalorian, WandaVision, or The Avengers movies. We can see that the more movies we make in a series or the more episodes we make in a TV show, well, it's gonna cost the company more money. However, Disney has achieved economies of scale. What they do to reduce their costs of each individual movie and TV show episode is they'll film it all at once. This reduces the overall budget of the movie and it makes it more efficient. That way they're able to make more with less money. Another way in which companies reduce their costs is by utilizing just-in-time delivery. This is when companies will receive the shipments of parts or materials needed for the production of a good or service moments before it's actually needed. This helps reduce inventory costs and also maximizes production as companies now no longer have to worry about having all these products being stored. Instead, they arrive at the moment before they're needed for the actual production. When analyzing the spatial layout of different companies, we can see that companies that cluster near other companies with similar economic interests will actually benefit from agglomeration. This clustering of similar like-minded businesses allows companies to share resources, infrastructure, even customers that will make it so the companies that are participating there are actually better off. There's a reason why car dealerships all locate near each other, or while factories will all locate near the same neighborhoods. That way they can share the infrastructure and resources to be better off than if they were on their own. The last concept that we could look at is actually similar to agglomeration in a couple of different ways, and it's growth poles. These are areas which concentrate on technically advanced industries that stimulate economic development in the businesses that are connected to those industries. We can see that the clustering of this advanced technology allows again the sharing of resources and infrastructure to make it so companies are better off than if they were alone. All right, geographers, hopefully right now your head isn't spinning. We just went over a ton of different concepts and now comes the time to practice. Make sure you answer the quiz questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comments below. And when you're down there checking your answers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's a great way to support the channel. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Also, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that can help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right. Thank you so much for watching the video today, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin. And until next time, I'll see you guys online.